in this video, we're going to see how negative values impact our technique for bounding below. Before, when bounding above, negative values were actually easy, we just dropped them. This is going to pose several problems as we'll see as we go through this. So, let's begin by applying the rules that we learned in our first couple of examples, which is we start with the given expression, log base 4 of 4n squared minus 5n plus 8. We drop the positive values that are lower order terms. So we drop the 8, and we're left with 4n squared minus 5n. And now we need to make this thing smaller. It might not be obvious to you. Negatives tend to confuse people sometimes with inequalities, so we'll try and be careful here. I'm going to show you what we're going to do, and then we'll justify it. I'm going to replace the negative 5n with negative 5n squared. You might say, well, is that even true? Negatives might be confusing with inequalities. Let's divide that inequality by negative 5n. If I divide it by negative 5n, I have 1 less than or equal to n. Or, alternatively, n greater than or equal to 1. So, it is true so long as n is big enough. So, this seems okay. I will comment on the fact that the reason that this is true is that we are subtracting a negative value. If we subtract a larger negative value, one that is more negative, like negative 5n squared is more negative than negative 5n, then it will become smaller. So, we're subtracting a larger value, therefore the entire expression will become smaller. Let's try this and see where it leads us. This is greater than or equal to log base 4 of 4n squared minus 5n squared. And just like before, we need to make sure to comment that that's only true when n satisfies some inequality, in this case, greater than or equal to 1. And if you're good at math, you might start to recognize that this is a problem. Let's simplify and see why it's a big problem. We have log base 4 of negative n squared. And if you think back to a calculus class they've taken, you might go, hold the phone. That's really bad. Log of negative values is entirely undefined. This does not work. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Because it looked promising, right? It, it was, we had a technique for getting rid of negative values. However, this negative value was too small in some sense and made the inside of that log negative and our definition of omega and big O requires that constants are positive and also that they're well-defined. So this violates potentially two things. We have a negative value showing up, which could be bad, because our con our definition assumed that that C value was greater than zero. That's one reason it could be bad. The second reason it could be bad is that we have undefined values here. Things like log of negative values, square root of negative values, fourth roots of negative values, all of those things would pose problems. So what can we do to fix our technique? It looks like it's promising. So Rather than try this, let's try something different. Let's replace the negative 5n with negative n squared. Where on earth did I come up with negative n squared? I just chose a constant that is smaller than 5 to put in front of that n squared. Again, with my reasoning I mentioned before, by having a higher power of n, that quantity is more negative eventually n squared grows faster than n, so by replacing the negative 5n with negative n squared, eventually that will be a smaller value, so this just changes our choice of n naught and will avoid some of the chicanery we saw there. So we're going to divide by negative n, and we get 5. We divide by a negative, so it's less than or equal to n. Alternatively, that's written as n greater than or equal to 5, so that seems good. Let's move this off to the side because it's just some scratch work for us. Let's try that instead. So here in a different color, when bounding below, we are going to replace the negative 5n this time with negative n squared and see how that affects the problem. So we have 4n squared. We're replacing negative 5n with negative n squared. And this is greater than or equal to now. If we combine our like terms, that becomes 3n squared. And now we're in similar territory to what we saw before. We can drop the 3, reduce it down to a 1, and that makes our lives much easier. So we reduce the 3 down to a 1, and we have log, log base 4 of n squared. We can use our log property to bring the 2 out front, and we have 2 log base 4 of n. I just realized I forgot to include this caveat, which is this only is true when n greater than or equal to 5. So as a final comment, let's write down our choice of c and our choice of n naught. Our choice of C is the thing that appears out front of the log. In this case, that's 2. 
Our choice of n naught is how large n must be. In that case, that is 5. And this technique for dealing with negative values should always work. You can always replace a lower order term with a higher order term that is a smaller constant, any smaller constant. This choice of negative n squared was completely arbitrary. I could have done any value out front of this n squared. I could have written 3 and it would have worked. I could have written 4 thirds and it could have worked. I could have written pi over e and it would have worked. Any choice that is less than 4 would have worked. The goal was that when I subtracted here, I didn't get a negative value. So if I chose any constant less than 4, it would work. So I could have replaced it with negative 2 n squared, negative 3 n squared, negative 4 thirds n squared. Any negative coefficient there that is less than 4 would have worked.